discernment, to illuminate. Yet we notice the difficulty in our daily life, in the small and big decisions, in personal and community life, and in our mission, which impels us to revitalize, working more on the human level and on our self-awareness. It is there where we can become more aware of what moves us, our criteria, our judgments and prejudices, our disordered affections, etc., that sometimes become obstacles to the search for God's will. There are moments in daily life, in which choices slash decisions made in personal, community and apostolic life are not always made in a spirit of discernment come from and are moved by our own personal criteria, judgments, prejudices and disordered attachment. Carlos Cabarrus, a Jesuit who has worked and published on the subject of discernment in confrontation with self-knowledge, explains in one of his publications. Ignatius was able to sense, as Freud later did and as all of psychology has been doing, that which we now call the unconscious, that which we know is there, but we are hardly aware of. On the other hand, he experienced that it is precisely in our unconscious where God acts and reveals himself to us. Saint Augustine said that God is the most intimate part of our intimacy. But Ignatius also found that this unconscious is a ready-made material, a breeding ground, for the action of the evil of this world that seduces and attracts us, it makes its accomplices, thus increasing the disorder and imbalance of the world, and we wound the universe. Now, let us also consider it this way. For this reason, Saint Ignatius invented a methodology to distinguish, to discern, he said, what contributes to personal and community life, and what contributes to generate personal and world evil. That is to say, from Ignatius we can learn to discern life in order to discover, by evaluating what we do and by analyzing reality, what contributes to personal and community life, and at the same time to realize how we contribute to generate personal and world evil. Ignatius captured the hidden details of the person. In more familiar words, we would say that what is revealed by personal experience implies, on the one hand, a reality that is beaten, wounded, violated, but also, on the other hand, potential, some forces, a well of possibilities, a set of positive forces. That is to say, that every person is moved in their actions by a mixture of these two parts of their heart, the wound and the well, and these are the two faces of the heart of the human person. There is no doubt that in our personal life, and in the mission, it is very necessary to discern and to acquire a disposition that permeates our way of being as Carlos Rafael Cabarrus S.J. Handmaids of the Sacred Heart in relation to the mission. It seems fundamental that we work on our own person, while continuing to cultivate in our lives the sources and means of our spirituality. In General Congregation 18, the recommendation to the Superior General, document that illuminates our Ignatian style of government, was materialized in the document of Sister Maria Alina Aljunate, Government in the Institute, 2010. In General Congregation 19, Decree 1 on Strategic Planning stated that strategic planning should be promoted by means of apostolic discernment in the Institute. In General Congregation 20, the document in the heart of him whom they have pierced we contemplate mercy, in the subtitle, Move to make mercy Kamilov in our communities, we feel called to be, communities that discern together, because we want to listen to the ever greater God who speaks to us through the sisters and places the personal freedom of each one of us in the framework of us. This implies reviewing the place from which we are relating to one another in order to grow in evangelical fraternity. Discernment, as a gift of the Spirit, etches in us the certainty that God is continually at work in history and allows himself to be found by those who sincerely seek God's presence and will. Prayer and the daily examination are the fundamental means to live in discernment. The profound encounter with Jesus Christ helps us to shape our life according to his style and to feel sustained in God's love. All discernment is a journey of faith that opens us to listen to events and people. It is also a personal and communitarian process aimed at making choices in life and mission that will transform reality according to God's plan. Community discernment requires prior personal discernment, 
but also sincere recognition and appreciation for all the persons who participate in this process. It is also necessary to have a good capacity to listen, to welcome what the other shares. All this must be done in an atmosphere of spiritual communication, where the desolations and consolations previously recognized and formulated by all those who participate in the discernment are exposed. Being of Ignatian spirituality, we are always invited to discernment, which implies that we must first know how to discern in our own life, in order to be able to use this specific means of our spirituality in our mission. Our lack of discernment could also be attributed to being distracted. Adolfo Nicholas S.J. wrote a reflection from his personal experience on a series of distractions to which he believes we need to be attentive. The easy temptations that distract us from getting distracted in prayer to getting distracted in life. Perfectionism as a narcissistic distraction. Ego as the number one distraction. Media and marketplace distractions, gadgets, internet. Distractions of superficiality in the religious realm. Classics accompanied by an invitation. According to him, and according to Ignatian spirituality, these distractions can make us lose our center. Each one of them takes us through realities that we habitually live, in which many times we can feel identified and that make us lose our way. Complete letter, from distraction to commitment. Supporting texts. From the Gospel of Matthew. The Pharisees and Sadducees came and, to test him, asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He said to them in reply, In the evening you say, Tomorrow will be fair, for the sky is red, and in the morning, today it will be stormy, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to judge the appearance of the sky, but you cannot judge the signs of the times. An evil and unfaithful generation seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. And then he left them and went away. First Letter to Thessalonian we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, cheer the faint-hearted, support the weak, be patient with all. See that no one return evil for evil, rather always seek what is good both for each other and for all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances, test everything, retain what is good, refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace himself make you perfectly holy and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here are some questions that may help you reflect and then share in community. Remember to take notes and write down what you want to communicate. 1. The daily examen. Is it a regular practice in your life? What difficulties do you encounter? What helps you the most to be able to live it every day? Two. What experiences of personal and community discernment have you had in your life? Have they been positive? Negative? You can share. 3. What steps do you think should be taken to make personal and community discernment more present in our lives? What could help us the most? We share in community by means of the listening circles. You Lord are a flood and outpouring. Like a silent lymph you saturate all that is and all that we are. You are a God poured out. Let me gather you, like gold nuggets sifted from the sands of the river of life. May I seek you, find you and give you away, like hidden gold, which is not mine. It belongs to all. Let me not, O Lord, gather you, reserve you, and keep you. May I not be satisfied to take care of you and clean you like a curious piece in a museum for human tourism. Teach me to lose myself. And may I lose myself. Dispose of what is yours. See me where you will, Lord, with your two hands. Sow me, without measure, in your way. May I, as wheat, not withhold myself from decaying and from leaving ears of grain to swell your barn. From the bread that you are and that you make me, a thousand famines must be satisfied. Take, Lord, what you gave me and what is most yours and mine. I power to decide about myself. I decide to be love and grace like you. This is enough for me. Ignacio Egozes S.J. 